I hear you, girl. Everyone gets the same amount of time. Use it better, maybe. It was that squint and that, hmm, that looked a little like, are you here to judge me or like read me the film? What's going on here? So, Jeffrey Boyer Chapman, he's been getting a lot of backlash the past two months since Canada's Drag Race has been on the air. People don't like him. They're saying that he's not constructive with his critiques. He's mean. He's trying to be the Michelle Visage of Canada, which I kind of see where they're coming from with some of his commentary on the girls. It's like, okay, you didn't like something, but what could I have done to make it better? You know, we want constructive criticism here, not just that I look busted and that's it. Or at least that's what we're seeing after the final cut has been edited. Recently, he deleted his Twitter account because of bullying. Now, this caused a lot of stir in the Drag Race fandom. I mean, he's been getting hate, to be honest, since the show, the show premiered here in Canada. People did not love the way he was coming across. In the beginning, there was an interview done with all the judges and I believe Brooke said Jeffrey is the Michelle Visage of Canada. And so we already had it in our minds that he's gonna kind of be the harsh judge. I don't wanna say mean judge, but the harsher one. Uh, however, as harsh as Michelle Visage is, most times she's constructive. I was talking with someone just today about Michelle and they're like, uh, Michelle is very harsh too, but at least Michelle has constructive criticism to give while Jeffrey's just like, your face looks busted, period. And I was thinking back, Michelle has done some really, had some questionable judging techniques in the past where she would really lay in on a queen. The first thing came to mind was Adore Delano season two of All Stars. Right off the bat, I don't want your excuse about a hog body. I don't care about your personality being charming. It's just like, you look gross and I don't like it. And Adora was like, you know, hold up, wait a minute. Why are you being so shitty? Like it's the first episode, I get it, it's all stars and you're trying to like set precedence for great drag in immediately. But all drag queens coming back are coming back with their own brands and things that they do well. As Bianca said in season six, name one thing you do successfully. Adore does a lot of things successfully. She's one of like the highest paid drag queens in the world. In 2020, not sure, but back in the day she was really popping. Uh, so yeah, back to Jeffrey and in comparison to Michelle. Michelle does not always come across as motherly. Though I have to admit most times she gives constructive critique. But I can tell when she's just looking for something to say to make it a soundbite or to just be quintessential Michelle, that little mean judge beside RuPaul. Like in All Stars again when she came for Valentina. Oh, didn't you already do a Miss America type thing? Valentina had to like check her. No, that was Miss Columbia for a Snatch Game. And this is Miss Venezuela. I'm a whole Barbie doll here. And yes, I'm gonna keep doing uh, Latinx country pageant girls because that's what my brand is, that's who I represent. Those are my people. So in those instances, I see where Michelle was just trying to be a little bitchy, for lack of a better term right now. And I can't recall much more than that. Other judges on Drag Race have done questionable things, I believe. Ross Matthews got in trouble a few years back for saying something to a queen that wasn't palatable. I remember Santino Rice calling Ginger Minge the other white meat, which is like pork, oink oink, which was like cringy. Because Ginger is a petite girl, but she's robust, you know? And that was kind of body shaming. So Canada's Drag Race is produced, I, it's, it's a wow, Thing. We all know that. World of Wonder is like they own Drag Race. But Bell Media here in Canada produces it. 
correct me if I'm wrong, might be. And it's aired on Crave here in Canada, which would be like a Netflix to you guys in the States uh, or Hulu. And so they put out a statement after Jeffrey deleted his Twitter. The, popular, the popularity of Canada's drag race speaks volumes to the immense talent of our queens and phenomenal judges, and we couldn't be more proud of them. Okay, available in more than 160 countries around the world, Canada's drag race has an international fan base, and it's unfortunate that some of the, those fans have let their passion cross the boundary into harassment by posting hateful comments about our queens and judges online. We also see Crystal, uh, who is a queen from Drag Race UK. Uh, she said, so the black queer judge on Canada's Drag Race gets bullied off Twitter, y'all happy? Question mark. I agree. The fans do go overboard. I do a weekly review of the show. I have people coming in my comments, it's people finding me on <laughs> Instagram and Twitter and they say crazy shit sometimes. And it's not cute. I'm unbothered. I don't know you. You don't pay for all of this. <laughs> so I'm cool. Uh, but these people are putting their artistry out there and their entire livelihood depends on fans and the fans are really here trashing them. And not in a constructive way either. Uh, it's more like, we hate you, go off yourself. These things are never acceptable. I don't condone it at all we need to relax i keep telling people in my comments that it's just a drag show it's a tv show it's for entertainment it's not serious if i have an opinion that's different from yours it doesn't mean we have to fight about it you don't need to convince me of your opinion i'm not trying to convince you of mine we're literally watching something for entertainment and it's either you like it or you don't personal views a lot of people love the treat the three stooges. I didn't care for it. I didn't find it funny. Doesn't mean I'm going to send them hate mail to say that they're trash entertainers. All right. Also, I see that Scarlet Bobo, that's one of the finalists on Canada's Drag Race. She's in the top four right now. She put out a statement. She said, "Fans of Drag Race, please stop sending hate to members of the cast." It's fine to have your favorites, but bullying is not okay. And at all, please stop sending hate to the amazing queens in the cast. Please, that is all. I love that the cast, they're really speaking out because it's necessary. If you stay quiet, then you're complacent to what's going on. Yes, Jeffrey has been a little unpalatable sometimes throughout the show. Does he deserve to be bullied off of Twitter? Heck no, like for what? That's trash, what you guys are doing. I'm not coming for you, I'm just saying, if you're a fan of the show and you're going at this man, adding him and talking shit every single day, get a life. Have your opinion, I don't like what you're doing, move on. But like going at him and bullying him and harassing him, that's ridiculous. So it's said that there's a rumor going around that Jimbo might not make it to the final three. And that's impending, like that's coming up in the next episode. So people online are saying that because the, the rumor is that Jimbo might not make it to the final three or Jimbo's not in the final three, whatever. That's why Jeffrey's like, I don't wanna be online when this episode airs, so I'm going to just take myself away from the situation, which I totally get because Jimbo fans are reminiscent of Trixie and Katya fans. They're very diehard, they are very aggressive, and they are just vicious. They will support you to the end, but they will tear people down on the internet for your benefit, even if you don't want them to, which is really sad. So I get why he removed himself from that situation before things exploded, because obviously a lot of the backlash has to do with him giving Jimbo negative critiques week after week. I mean, he did say to Jimbo, 
a week after she won the Snatch Game. Welcome to the competition. She's been here. <laughs> you know, I don't agree with everything he says. I really don't. But that does not mean that I'm going to go and attack him. For what? <laughs> it makes no sense, guys. Like, it's ridiculous. We're... I was about to say we're all adults, but I'm just realizing a lot of the fandom is probably like 12 years old and they don't know better. Now, Brooklyn even put out a statement or, no, she actually did a whole live video saying that she apologized for the Ilona Verley comment about her butt, you know, because Jeffrey did make that comment and fans were upset about it. Brooklyn really didn't go as hard on Ilona, but she did do a video apologizing which I think was the right thing to do. I feel like if Jeffrey would have controlled the narrative, it would have been harder for people to stay mad at him so long. I'm not a PR person, but this is what I'd do. Whenever an episode aired and people got up in arms not being happy with my critiques, I'm pretty sure the relationship between the judges and the cast, the group of girls, all of them it's pretty cool i'm assuming it is so it would have taken nothing for him to go and like do a quick little live chat with the girl and be like it's all love it was just a critique it wasn't meant to body shame you it was just that your butt was out and it didn't look it, 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 i could see razor bumps and stuff i was just thinking that you could have looked smoother and more polished that, that's where the comment was coming from instead of making it seem like I said what I said I'm not going going online to defend it which is fine sometimes that's how I feel I said what I said <laughs> and I'm not taking it back but if you're in the public eye and you want to like continue on this journey of drag race which I'm pretty sure he wants to because this can be a really good check for him in the years to come I would have done something like that. Every week I would have done a little live because he does the podcast with all the Eliminated Queens, which I believe that was taped months ago at this point. He doesn't even promote it. Weird. Uh, but I get it. He's been getting backlash before the show even aired, so why even come online? I would have really put myself ahead of the issue and like tried to control the narrative rather than sit back and let everyone just come up with their own idea of what it is really like, you know? All I'm saying. Now, in the beginning, a lot of queens from the US were saying that it was cringe, the type of the judging style of Jeffrey and maybe some of the other judges. I personally think all three judges have said something that I didn't care for throughout the entire season. All three of them, they have said things I didn't care for. And that's separate from me not agreeing with their judging. Meaning like, oh, this is not great. And I'm looking at it like, that's really bomb. But they've all three said something to a queen where I thought, that was a little cringy. Why would you say that to that person? Or why did you have to say it like that? I think people really started to get up in arms with Jeffrey when he was like, well, Jimbo, you should have used her time better in that paper runway challenge where they all did different uh, things, paper, plastic, and metal. And they're like, well, maybe use her time better next time. Hmm, it was that squint and that hmm, that looked a little like, are you here to judge me or like read me to filth? Like what's going on here? Uh, so even back then, a lot of queens from the American Drag Race franchise were like, cringy, cringy, cringy. I remember a lot of them like not being here for it. One that sticks out in my head, plenty did, but I remember Tatiana was like, if they said that to me, over, you know? And now we're having queens come out in support of Jeffrey because it's now become a race issue. It's now being said that he's black. I mean, I just read the statement not too long ago. Crystal was like, you bullied a black, queer person off of the internet. Hope you're happy. The minute she mentioned the skin color, we know this is now a race issue. And since the first season of Drag Race, 
and the internet started to like get popular and Twitter was a thing, Reddit was a thing, we know that black queens and black people on the show hasn't, they have not been treated the same as white queens. There's always been a divide. There's always been a favoritism thing, which is fine. Everyone likes what they likes, they like, but we all saw the curve and noticed that a lot of the fandom was younger and they were Caucasian and they did not care for the by POC Queens. After Crave put out a statement, then WoW put out a statement, and it's so funny to me because I was talking to a friend and I said, Crave put out a statement, WoW. WoW Presents would never, because <laughs> this has been happening for so long, the whole racism in the fandom, and WoW never gets involved that I can recall. They're always like, like do that amongst yourselves. I'm not stepping in here, you know? But WoW put out a statement, they posted a tweet, they said in the tweet, uplift your queens, uplift your comments, uplift your community. Everybody say love, your voice has power, so remember to use it to uplift our queens, or peers and or community. Show all or family love, some love in this, in the replies. Yeah, so that's what WoW said, which I think is really great. Uh, you should do that more often. That's all I'm saying. Now, the Vixen made a statement on Twitter, and I found this statement to be very interesting, and it kind of harkens back to what I was saying, that the divide between fans and what they allow queen uh, white people to get away with versus what they allow black people to get away with, it's like split down the middle, right? Because I thought Michelle Visage has been quite questionable in some of her comments in the past, but I don't recall a huge backlash. People would like take it and be like, this is Michelle being Michelle giving constructive criticism. And though Jeffrey is a bit snarky on the show, and I don't know if it was his intention or was just him trying to find his way as to like, what kind of character am I gonna be? Am I gonna be a funny Carson? Am I gonna be the mean Michelle? Am I gonna be RuPaul? Like he was trying to find him way, his way. <laughs> so I kind of like cut him some slack sometimes, even though I don't agree with whatever he says. The Vixen said, she posted a picture of Bob the Drag Queen when Bob was in this beautiful black gown with an afro, sheer bottom, looking very beautiful. She looked elegant. Bob's makeup is not always the greatest, but she looked good to me. I remember this runway very well and I thought, oh, Bob looks cute. And that afro, like really, really, I was into it, you know? And the Vixen says, <clears throat> I'll never forget Michelle asking Bob when she would show glamour after Bob had already come down the runway in this gown, the gown I just talked about. As an audience member, I felt like that was a clear message that Afros weren't glamorous. This only gave Derek fuel to poke Bob about ratchet drag, you know? And I kind of agree with the Vixen, it's like, if I walk down the runway looking like this, you know, are you gonna tell me that it's not glamorous because it's dr dreads? Like, what do you consider glamour at this point? Do you consider glamour to be a straight hair updo or a Marcel wave? Like, that doesn't really grow out of the scalps of a lot of people that look like me. So if I look like I look, what's glamour for me then? Ask yourself that question. Derek did poke fun at Bob saying that her drag was ratchet. That's a fact. And Michelle saying that when Bob comes out on the stage in a beautiful black gown and an afro was not glamorous, Derek could have felt like in that moment, well, not only Derek, but the fandom watching, which is a lot of young impressionable white kids Afros aren't glamorous, and afros are ratchet. Black isn't glamorous, black is ratchet. It sends a very bad message about blackness and if it's acceptable or not. Which could all be tied back into why like, a lot of the fandom prefers blonde queens that are Caucasian. I said it, like, we can talk about it more in the comments below, guys. It's fine. 
I will reply to everyone. Uh, the Vixen also said, I'm going to say it loud. Y'all are giving Jeffrey Boyer Chapman all the hate because he's a black man. Michelle Visage has said way worse things to Queens for many seasons and fans kept, sorry, fans just fell in line with her opinions. Keep it. That's what I said. Michelle has been like, not the sweetest person to a lot of Queens, but everyone has really been okay with it. So in conclusion, I want to continue this conversation a little bit. I want to know, do you feel like the fandom is racist? I'll give you my opinion right away so there's no confusion. I do believe majority of the fandom in Drag Race, they are Caucasian and they tend to want to support what they can relate to. I mean, Asia O'Hara like talked about it recently in an interview saying that, I think this was when they were doing the whole work the world thing. She's like, a lot of times I almost, I was in top four, the finale of the show and one of the great, the best contenders and all of that. And people would come to meet and greets and not even look at me. They would go to people who got eliminated week, like week two and go take a picture with them, but they don't want to take a picture with this black queen that's like popping, does all her own drag, very talented. No one gives me the love or support. Evie Oddly was the, saying the same thing. So obviously there is a divide. The fandom isn't just supporting girls that are talented. They're supporting girls that they relate to this wise. If you're white and, I, and I'm white and I feel like I see myself in you, then I support you. And the black girl that's really working hard and doing a great job is like, I don't really see the effort because my mind is just like blocked from that. That's my opinion on the fandom. And the fandom needs to chill because I know it's no secret, most of the, the richest queens out there are not the black ones. And a lot of the hardest working queens and most creative queens are the black ones. Talent out the wazoo and people still sleep on them. Didn't want it to be a race thing, but guess what? It is. When Shea Kule walked in the workroom and said, I'm black, you think she said that just because she felt like being cute? The fandom is crazy, and they don't appreciate a lot of black queens' art. They're quick to judge it, they're quick to tear it down, and another queen that's not a bi POC queen that does half the level of work and walks around without a corset in the same wig every single time and a very cheap flea market dress will sell millions of makeup and will get booked for every gig and they will get paid three, four, five times what a queen who is cinched giving you different choreography, giving you different numbers, outfits, every, a queen that's doing so much more work, they'll get more. And that's the honest truth about it. Let's be real. I said enough, this whole thing is really annoying to me. We still have to be dealing with it. The more we talk about it, the better it gets, I guess. If you can understand where I'm coming from, then you can probably change your ways a little bit so that you we don't have to have this conversation again. If I told you what you're doing is hurting me, believe my experience, my lived experience. That's what these black bi POC queens want you to do. Believe their lived experience and do better as a fandom. If you're a fan of this show, that means you're either queer or an ally of queer people then why the hell are you tearing each other down? I'm over it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye. Let's talk about it in the comments.